Greetings, Stephen here. It is um, September 23rd, 2024. And I've got a big mess here on the floor in front of me, and I want to show you what it's all about. Um, what it is, is, is a video projector um, that uses a laser. Very similar to the uh, one up there on the shelf. You can see it there. And it makes a uh, an image. The white one, by the way, not the uh, the black one, which is an old school mechanical slide projector. Uh, here, let me flip it over, and I'll show you the screen. And the this is a pretty bright projector in that right now there's a fair amount of daylight coming into these windows in here, and you can still see that screen. That's a uh, rather powerful projector there. So went ahead. This one failed probably around two months out of the warranty so we couldn't get it repaired it's an nec the one up on the shelf there is a sony but necs are generally pretty good projectors so i was real surprised at this um some of these parts over here are some of the case parts but this is where it all happens here this is the bottom half of the projector and um we've got several parts here this is the main circuit board here this actually sat on the top of the projector right there um, you can see there's the uh, the bottom half. And then uh, we have this rather cool looking air duct here. And there's three fans inside of this. As you can see there. And this piece sat right around in here. And blew the air into this piece. This is the actual LCDs and such in the projector. It's actually turned this way in the projector. I had it backwards. Uh, the lens actually came out right there. Um, but you see three holes there. And what that does is that blows cool air onto the LCD panels. Here I can lift this out. Let me see those three holes right there. Um, it's very important to keep the LCD panels cool. Um, the failure point in this projector was, in fact, a bad LCD panel. You can see right there, see if I can zoom in on it there. That blue LCD panel um, has, a, um, has a burn mark in it, uh, which is real surprising for these NECs. I've um, been having good reliability, especially for the lasers. But these are three individual panels here. This is for blue, this is for green, this is for red. And they all make the individual colors. So, how do the colors, how do you get individual colors? Well, let's take a flashlight here and we'll show you. If I shine the flashlight in here, you see um, the individual colors show up. And the, uh, let's see, let's get it lined there. You can see it now. Uh, we see red on the right, green in the center, and blue on the left there. And inside of this piece is all sorts of what are called dichronic mirrors. Um, now that i got the cover off of it, I can show you how that works. We're shining the light back into it here. And what these mirrors do is, they pass one color of light, but not the other. So, as you can see there, um, the light comes through here, and it gets separated into blue, which goes through here. And the red and green continue through here. This one separates the red and it continues through to here and then the green goes through here so and then you have various lenses here on this piece that make it all um get focused onto the lcd panels um, but the interesting part about this projector is this over here most projectors have a projection lamp in them um, this one has a laser in it that makes the light um, and most projectors this piece right here would have a metal halide lamp in it which would be about this size um, and it's a replaceable lamp they usually last between 1000 to 2000 hours depending on the model of the video projector um, what we have here is a phosphor wheel and this actually spins and on this side this piece here with this large heatsink on it is the actual laser piece. Um, I'll put that right there. And you can actually see it's pretty small. Um, and it's flat. This thing generates a lot of heat. As you can see, this thing has a pretty serious cooling system on it with a heat pipe. And you have some 
fans. I took all the fans out. But here's several of the fans that would uh, be mounted in the case right behind this piece. And this is mounted in here. Let's see if we can get it back in with one hand here. And what happens is, is the light shines through here. The blue portions of the light continue through this mirror to shine on this phosphor wheel. And the phosphor wheel converts it into the lower frequency lights, the green and the red. Whereas the bluish light comes through this. This is yet another diachronic mirror. Um, so we can see that working right there. See, it's blue on the laser side and yellow on the um, color wheel side there. And then that shines through that hole there and it goes into here and then comes out the lens and you get your picture on the wall. But the reason why we're using a phosphor wheel here is because that laser is a class 4 laser. It gets pretty hot and bright. So this has to spin so that the phosphor is simply not burned. It, it spins and it rotates so that it keeps it cool. Um, as you can see, this piece is, in fact, another heatsink. Um, so what happens is, is that spins... And so the point that what it's touched by the laser rotates around and gets a chance to cool over through the rest of the, the wheel there. And uh, keeps it comfortable so it doesn't burn out. These are good for usually about 20,000 to 30,000 hours, depending on what you uh, set. Which is about the average for a tube TV. Um, if you remember those back in the 1980s and 90s or whatever, you know, they would usually last a good 10 or 15 years, sometimes even more than that, depending on how much TV you watched and the conditions. So, um, a 20,000 to 30,000 hour lifespan is um, is about typical uh, for a laser projector. And I don't think it's all that bad. A lot of these um, have actually exceeded that, just like tube TVs. But just wanted to show you how this works here. Um, on this board here is all the, what I would call image dissection that actually takes the image and produces the individual pixels this is a 1080p projector 1920 by 1080 and there's all your ports that it would have on the back you see two hdmis it also has um, ethernet for control and hd base t video over network you got usb and a good old school good old school vga right there in the middle and it converts it all and what I think still amazes me is the simple fact that those tiny little LCDs produce a picture that is that large and bright. That is just the coolest thing, I think. Uh, but anyway, this is inside of a laser projector. I hope you enjoyed.